This is Digital Equipment Corporation's PDP-8A computer. It is the last of the PDP-8 series computers. It is not a microcomputer. It is not a personal computer. It has no microprocessor. It is a mini computer made up of discrete transistors and small scale 7400 series transistor transistor logic chips, TTL. The original PDP-8 came out in 1965 and there were various versions S, I, L, E, F, M, and this is the A. PDP stands for Programmable Data Processor. Digital was afraid to use the word computer because people thought of IBM 360s which cost millions of dollars. The front panels are held on by press-in plastic pins. Just pulling the panels out, remove them. panel is uh, cast aluminum and the metal cabinet is a 19 inch relay rack. The top board is the CPU board. As you can see, it's comprised solely of 7400 series transistor chips. The next board down is the extended option board. This board contains auto restart logic. It can process a low AC line voltage and shut down the computer and restart it when the line voltage resumes. It also contains boot ROMs, which I'm not using. The computer can also be used in a time-sharing environment. I'm not using that either. It was a very advanced computer for its time. The world's first desktop computer. The third board is the I.O. options board. Here you'll find the serial port for a uh, teletype writer or terminal, parallel port, and the interfacing to the front control panel. The vertical board in the back that these boards plug into is the omnibus and there are 12 slots. I'm using the top five. The order in which you put the boards in doesn't matter, however, only slots two and three support the AC low line voltage detection and the panel lock function. There's no RAM or ROM or disk drive in this computer. Programs are stored in magnetic core memory. The memory board is actually two boards sandwiched together and protected inside between the two boards are the actual magnetic cores since it's a 12-bit computer and this is an 8K memory board, there are 12 times 
8,192 magnetic cores which were hand wired. Extremely expensive memory. A core memory is space proven. It was actually used on the space shuttle Challenger in 1986 and that was the shuttle mission which exploded and parts of it fell into the ocean. The core memory was retrieved from the ocean and still retained the original program data completely intact. That is how reliable core memory is. Even if you turn off the computer, everything that you've done on it is stored for thousands of years. Far more reliable but far more expensive than silicon based RAM memory. There is no disk drive or boot program. The computer is completely empty when you first get it. You have to enter a small program from the front panel to be able to read from the serial port to load larger programs. This is called the RIM loader and starts at address 7756 in octal. 7756 load address. Memory display. 6032 deposit. 6031 deposit. 5357 deposit. 6036 deposit. 7106 deposit. 7006 deposit. 7510 deposit. 5357 deposit. 7006 deposit. 6031 deposit. 5367 deposit. 6034 deposit. 7420 deposit. 3776 deposit. 3376 deposit. 5356 deposit. 0 deposit. 0 deposit. 7756 load address. And we're now checking by looking at the display of each of those addresses to verify that everything was entered correctly. Everything's there. So now we can start running the RIM program. 7756 load address, run. It's now running and looking at the serial port. The serial cable from the I.O. option board is this 40-pin ribbon cable. And it goes into an interface box I made to select between a teletypewriter and a serial port to another computer. Since I don't have a paper tape reader, I'm using a Windows machine as the uh, storage media for my programs. So the communications is set up at 110 baud, two stop bits. And we're going to get the bin loader, which is a larger type program, much larger than the RIM program, and it allows to actually read in real user programs. So we're now transferring the bin loader into the PDP-8 computer. The RIM loader is reading in the bin loader. The speed is fixed at 110 baud due to the serial port interface. The rim loader has completed loading in the bin loader. So we're going to stop the rim loader from running. 7777 load switch register. 
Display the accumulator, 7777. Load address. And this is the start address of the bin loader. We're now going to run it. This will enable us to load in a user program. And the user program that I'm going to load in is Focal from 1969. This will take about seven minutes because it's quite a large program. So the rim loader is in core, the pin loader is in core, and soon focal will be in core. And once they're loaded, if you don't need any other programs or you don't change anything, they'll stay in there forever. and You don't have to, to transfer this from, uh, from outside ever again. There you go, Focal has been successfully loaded. Now I'm going to select the teletype machine as the serial communications device. This is a teletype model 35. It's an ASCII teletype. We're going to start Focal now. Address 200, load address, run. And the teletype has produced the prompt of Focal. Type. String hello. And focal response with the string. For i equals 1 to 10, type i new line. does exactly what you've instructed it. This is the immediate mode. I'm now going to use the serial port to load in focal programs. Again, the switch has to be set to the serial port to the outside computer. And they are transferred at 110 baud into PDP-8 computer through the focal program. Focal 1969, and these are some programs I wrote. This is what engineers and scientists were using in the 1960s. In addition to the IBM 360 mainframe computer from IBM, the smaller PDP-8 was in use in smaller laboratories and industry to help prepare man to go to the moon, the Apollo space program. And Focal was certainly one of the programs used. at this point that there's no operating system in the PDP-8. We just loaded a, a rim loader and a bin loader and Focal itself. These are self-contained programs. So we're now going to run program number one, which is a trigonometry program that prints out the sine, cosine, and tangent of all angles from 0 to 360 degrees in steps of 10 degrees. To do this by hand with a pocket calculator would take many hours. And here, in a matter of seconds, 
Focal is calculating and printing the results in tabular format. There's the real speed of the computer, 1.5 microseconds per instruction. listing the program that was responsible for that tabulation. It's just two lines. Vocal is a very concise language. Now I'm going to run another program I've written. This program prompts the user for an input. Vocal is a numeric program, but if you answer in letters, it will convert the letters into numbers. And in this case, I'm actually taking it literally. Hello is actually this huge number. H is an 8, E is exponent, and LLO is this large number. That shows you that you can get three exponent digits, positive and negative. Very large and very small numbers can be handled by focal. As I said, it was for the space program. Now we're doing some finance. Simple interest calculation. Computer and focal is excellent for repetitive tasks. Once you program what you want done in there, it will do the calculations endlessly. Now here is a program directly applicable to the Apollo space program. The stability of a control system for landing a lunar module, for example. So we have a sine times an exponent. And depending on the parameters of the exponent, you either have a stable return to zero oscillation, damped oscillation, or you have an out of control system that never returns, and that you certainly don't want. So this is modeling now. Focal is very powerful. Upon completion of this graphing, which is what this is, you will see how much programming was actually required to do a complete graphical analysis of this control system.
There is a damped oscillation which shows a stable control system. It returns to zero. And the program to calculate this and graph it is one line. Try that in another programming language. Focal, 1969, by the Digital Equipment Corporation, running on a DEC PDP-8A computer. Now going to load in another program, a chess playing program, one of the earliest ones on this type of machine. Here the white pieces are being asked uh, for position and I'm telling the computer you play the white pieces. First we're printing the board out, the board display BB. As you can see the black pieces are on the top of the board and the white pieces are on the bottom of the board in their starting positions. Now I'm trying to see what command is the command for telling the computer to do the move itself, not from a user. I want the computer to play the white pieces. It's a WP. Just checking the manual here. No, PW, play white. It's now calculating the first move using the standard notation. moved the first piece and it's asking now for the black piece to be moved and I'm going to be sneaky and I'm going to tell the computer to play the black pieces as well in other words the computer is going to play itself against itself it's doing serious computations during this time as I will demonstrate shortly Black has played, now the white is playing. There's a check. Here you can see the computer doing phenomenal amount of calculations and thinking to calculate the board strategy of all possible combinations of moves before it actually decides on a move. This is using the processor to its maximum capacity. This is just transistors, no microprocessor here. It's incredible. Here's a summary of that chess game, which went on for three hours.
and there is a checkmate from the black side. And there's the final board configuration. We've got the white king, WK, surrounded by black bishops, black rooks. And it's a checkmate. The PDP-8A computer from Digital Equipment Corporation. real historical computational machine.